Hey y'all, it's David Ducker coming back at you. Today, I'll be telling a RPG horror story. I will call this one The Black Knight of Tears. This was, like, I, I've... People say I get escalated easily. They say, Dave, you're a rageaholic. They say, Dave, you're a nitpicker. This GM made me mad. <laughs> I didn't say, I was very polite to the man. I didn't say anything to him. I didn't yell at him. I didn't dress him down. But when I hung up on this gentleman, after courteously saying good day, I was so mad. And I wasn't going to post about it because I didn't want to hurt the man's feelings. Cause I'm, but <laughs> upon reflection, I don't want to game with him again anyway. <laughs> so I don't care. So this gentleman... Says, hey Dave, I'm running the Pathfinder game. It's level three or whatever it was. Do you want in on this game? And I said, well, I guess so, because I'm not excited about Pathfinder. But I did have this slot free on my schedule. So I said, well, you know, maybe I can find some good players, bring them into one of my games at some point. Maybe it'll be fun. I've been in fun Pathfinder games. It's just those are games I have to work around the rule set because the rule set's so horrific. But I said, sure, I'll come in. It'll be great. So I, I ask him some perfunctory questions. You know, what's the story? What's the setting? What's our team? The campaign tripod. And he says, you're agents of the church. You're being sent into the swamp. Because something's been dragging the peasants into the swamp and you don't know what. It is, uh, it's set in Galarion. And I said, oh, Galarion. That's great. Pathfinder might have a terrible rule set, but their setting is, is really strong. I said, can I be a, a paladin or a, I think it was, since we're such low level, I think I was just a fighter. But I said, can I be a lay priest of Gorum? You know, not someone who has any miracles or spells uh, because we're too low level for that. But just somebody who worships Garum and is, is like a deacon in the clergy. And he said, sure, who's Garum? And so I explained to him who Garum was. Um, and Garum is like well, the god of battle. And his uh, clerics... Um, all wear like one pauldron and like one gauntlet and they they hit their pauldron with their gauntlet because the true name of Garum is the ringing of steel uh, he is our lord in iron and he's depicted just as like the most generic suit of plate armor and by donning a generic suit of plate armor you become an avatar of Garum or so they believe so I said, well, my character is, you know, he's like a, a martial uh, character. He's a lay priest, but it's a martial religion. So he'd be wearing like full plate or whatever the best armor I could get is. But the, the main gimmick is he's going to have like a full face helmet. And like underneath it, you know, I wanted to like a full coif of, of mail and like a, an iron mask. And every piece of skin on him is covered you know so that would be pretty normal for a priest of Garum so they won't think anything of it but I said to the GM let me be uh, like a, an orc or a half orc or something hated and then I'll just never take my mask off around them and they'll just assume that I'm like a human or something and then I'll, I'll drop hints and eventually, at some point, we can reveal that I've been an orc this whole time. All right? And he's like, oh, okay, great. You know, and he says, you know, you can't be an orc, but you can be a half-orc. And I said, great, no problem. So I'm a half-orc fighter. I've got, I think I ended up with, like, chain mail or whatever the best armor was that I could get. And I have my, my like, full mail coif, but I had, like, an iron mask on. So they meet me in the swamp, and I'm also on the same mission 
but I wouldn't wait for them because uh, Gorum waits for no man or something, whatever, just to get me in there because they, they had like already had a session, this is like session two or three, so they meet me, I'm on the same mission, no problem, and we meet up and we start uh, traveling through and I like I like drop a hint, of, you know. I'm like, you, you know, you notice that the shape of uh, my character's head is a little unusual, and the GM's like, "Is it?" And I'm like, "Yeah, buddy," because of the thing we discussed. And he's like, "Oh, you mean how you're a half orc?" And I was just like, "Oh, my secret!" I was like, "Gonna build this up and like reveal it." way later like not even this session like a future session it'll be like a mystery i can just build up and build up and build up that i'm not human at all they don't know what i am but you know or am i maybe i'm just human they don't know and and then you know i build it up slowly so you get the big reveal and as soon as i start dropping hints the gm just tells them i'm like oh oh my secret and I was like, oh, I was so brokenhearted about it. Because I love secrets. I love the big reveal. And he just threw it under the bus. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So we're going through, and this black knight comes out of the forest. He's got, like, full plate, head-to-toe, black lacquered iron, a giant two-handed black sword. You know, and I've got I've got the best armor out of all of us, and I've just got chain mail, so this guy is badass. He's like seven feet tall. I'm like six six, so he's like bigger and better armored than me. And he just like runs at us. He doesn't say hello or anything. So, you know, being a cleric of battle, I just run at him too. I don't give a care. So we start throwing down. And you know, I'm rolling, and I'm rolling, like, very well, and the GM, you know, I'm like, you know, I, I'm like, I rolled a 17, and my mod is, like, 3, so it's, like, 20. That's really good, I think. 17 out of 20, and I'm a fighter with high strength, or whatever, so I'm like, oh, great, you know, and the GM's like, oh, it, it bounces off his armor, it has no effect. So out of character, I'm like, oh, oh, shit. And in character, though, implacable. You know, I'm just going to keep slugging and fighting and, and uh, you know, just keep trying. Just keep trying. And then he, you know, he takes his turn and he's he's like, okay. He does, like, a high amount of damage. He just smashes me. So I'm describing, like, the blood is coming down and I'm, like, my, my shoulder's out of its socket. And I'm, like, I'm just fighting back one-armed. Like, I won't give up. You know, I'm throwing knees, and I'm stomping on him, whatever, I, you know, headbutts, anything. And, you know, I roll again. And I'm like, okay, I rolled like a, an 18. Does that hit him? GM's like, no, no. Glances off his armor. I'm like, oh. So, but my character, you know, he's implacable. So the, the Black Knight comes back, and he hits me again for like uh, the second third of my hit points. So I'm down to one third now. So I just I describe, you know, he he hits me again, you know, and the, there's a rent ripped open now in my armor, and there's just blood just flowing down, and I'm knocked down onto one knee, and I'm still fighting off of one knee. I'm looking up at him, and I'm just trying to get him from one knee. I'm beat down to the mud as we're in a swamp, and then I my turn again. I roll again. 20 natural 20 and which is like a critical success a critical hit and the gm is like oh it bounces off his armor and i'm like oh natural 20 bounces off his armor and so i describe you know how i think that i've got him and i think i like i i like drop my i i i think what i did was i described that i like swung up but I reached down with my other hand, my busted up arm, and I just pulled my poniard out. And while I'm distracting him, I just stab my dagger up, like, through his codpiece, and try to just 
uh, impale him down, down where the sun don't shine, because that's a critical hit. And, you know, and I just describe how it just glances off. Uh, and I'm like stunned and helpless and I've expended my energy. And then it's the GM's turn again and he rolls and he just brutally just beats me down into the mud. And now I'm flat on my back. There's mud and swamp water oozing all over me and my wounds and my armor. I lost my helmet and uh, and I'm just done. You know, my, my character is just done. And then the Black Knight, like, drops, he, like, pulls out a, a piece of parchment and just drops it on me and just, like, teleports away and disappears. And everybody's like, what the fuck was that? And they, like, pick up the parchment. It's like, you have been invited to dine with, um, with, like, Baron uh, Vladimir, uh, what's his face? You know, Vladimir Orlok, let's call him. Because I can't remember the real name. And they're like, oh, he was just Vladimir's message boy. His errand boy. And I'm like, the errand boy beat the shit out of me. You know, and I'm like, done. I'm like, the GM, I, you know, by the rules, I think I should have been dead. Because Pathfinder is fairly brutal combat rules. But the GM's like, oh no, you have one hit point left. Or whatever he did. So I'm like, okay, fine, whatever. So they have to like, you know, heal me up. We... we we pitch a camp, and I'm, like, describing, you know, my character is, like, distraught. He's trained all of his life in battle to be a paladin of the god of battle. Fighting is his life, and he just got the shit kicked out of him. He inflicted nothing on his opponent. And it, like, my character's heart is broken. His self-confidence completely shattered, you know. And we had really good role-playing out of that. And I figured there's got to be a payoff. The GM, you know, wouldn't send just some invincible errand boy after us and just brutally beat down my character and, and embarrass my character and make him look like a jobber. He wouldn't just do that for no reason. There's got to be a reason and a payoff. So the next day, you know, our characters are going through. We, we, we have this scroll and there's like directions and it takes us to this like ruined castle and like we get into the ruined castle and there's like clearly vampires you know but the vampires like invite us in and you know they feed us and clothe us and they take you know they take my armor and go get it cleaned up and then you know we go to sleep because our characters are stupid like, my character's really stupid. Got very low intelligence. So I don't know they're vampires. But they're clearly vampires. And apparently nobody else knows this either. So we just think they're a little creepy. Fine. We go to sleep. Uh, in the middle of the night, Buddy, our other character, like, wakes my character up. And he's like, we've got to go investigate this castle. There's something wrong here. Something spooky going on. So we all get up in the middle of the night and we're sneaking around the, the castle, you know, Vlad Orlok's haunted castle. And we go down into the basement, the dungeon, and there's like a crypt door, but it's got like a puzzle lock. So anybody who knows me knows how I feel about puzzles. I turn my camera off and I mute myself and I like just start browsing the internet. I can hear them trying to solve the puzzle. And they're not in character while they're solving the puzzle, which is one of the huge problems with puzzles. And they're getting mad. They're getting frustrated. They're getting exasperated. They're getting angry. You know, it's some kind of like riddle lock or something. I wasn't even really paying attention. There's like certain levers you have to pull or things you have to slide around. But I don't even pay attention really to riddles and puzzles. And especially my character because he's so stupid. He doesn't even know that the, the vampires are vampires. So I'm like, my character could never in a million years figure out this, this puzzle. So I've been cut out anyway. So I'm not even going to get exasperated. I'm going to browse the internet. 
So they're trying to solve this puzzle for like an hour while I'm just on the internet. You know, I'm posting in forums and looking up character portraits and whatever I'm doing. Finally, they actually solve it. And the GM, the GM uh, breaks character. Not that he was in character very often anyway. But he's like, wow, you guys solved that really quick. And the, uh, the player who solved it just said, I just Googled it. Because I was so frustrated with this stupid puzzle, I just Googled it. And I found it on the internet. And that's how I solved it. And the G and he's mad. They're all pissed because it's taken an hour, you know. And they've been out of character, so it's like you've been out of character for an hour too. It's like our momentum is gone, and they're pissed. And I'm I'm just bored. I'm not pissed because I knew not to go into a puzzle because I'd end up pissed because it always happens. If you want to see how to make it not happen. Look at my video on puzzles, because I use them all the time. There's a way to do them right. Everybody does them wrong. It's horrible. Anyway, the GM, he hears this. Oh, you want to go on Google. Ah, oh, you, you cheated. That's not fair. Oh, well, you're the first group to ever get this uh, puzzle. The last time I ran this puzzle, one of the players started crying. They were so frustrated. And he was proud of it. He's like, oh, I made my players cry. I'm a great GM. I run them through puzzles and let them sit there for hours, out of character, getting madder and madder and madder. And I immediately like lost all respect for this GM. Because he's already made someone in another group cry by doing this. And so he's going to do it again. I have no respect for that. You know, I don't want to game with the person ever again. I don't want to talk to them ever again. You know, forget the fact that we're out of character for an hour. Uh, people are mad. I'm bored. You know, you're doing this horrible puzzle. Forget the fact that he sent the invincible errand boy to make my character look like a jobber. Uh, to be invincible and make me look like trash. And make himself as a GM... I'll feel better. Oh, I'm the GM. I'm better than you. You know, I'm the GM. My characters are invincible. You know, he's blowing up his own ego, trying to put us down. Forget that. He made someone cry. And then he wanted to do it again. He wanted to make someone cry. That's a horror story. And then I understood why he didn't want my character to die. Because he just wants us to suffer, but still stick around so we can suffer more. So he can feel better about himself. This is like one of the possibly the worst GM I've ever had. I've had GMs who were like technically worse, but I mean morally. I've never felt like another GM was trying to make someone cry. And this man said he was trying to make someone cry. He's, he was proud of of making someone cry previously. He wanted to repeat the experience. So this is probably the worst GM I've ever encountered. All the other GMs were just like incompetent. But this, this person was actively malicious. And that is evil. You shift your alignment right now to evil, buddy. So that is my RPG horror story, The Black Knight of Tears. Where I was made to look the fool, and they were made uh, into rage monsters, uh, and then I was bored to death while the GM just soaked it up. Oh, the negative energy! Oh, oh, cry, cry for me! Like, oh, I don't want to have any truck with that man or his family because his mama didn't raise him right. You can quote me on that. So until I see you again. Don't make anyone cry over a role-playing game, and good day and good game.